After having the second worst record in the NBA this season, the Detroit Pistons get the number one overall pick in the 2021 NBA draft. I'm Madeline Burke for the game day here with Marcus Mosher. And Marcus, Pistons have won the fade for Cade. Looks like Cade Cunningham will be a Detroit Piston on draft night. Do you think this is a good fit? I do. I think Cade's by far the best player in this class. He's got all the traits that you want for a guy that you think could be a superstar in the NBA. He can score. He can shoot from long uh, distance. Uh, he's an excellent passer. I kind of compare him to a cross between like Paul George and Ben Simmons. Listen, I know people are down on Ben Simmons right now, but there's a reason why he went number one. Uh, I, I do think he's a perfect fit for the Detroit Pistons. I think they're going to build an offense around him. Um, and I'm excited about that future in Detroit. I mean, people are down on Paul George and Ben Simmons yeah. for what they're doing. That, on that might have been a bad comp. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, especially, too, because when I look at Cade Cunningham, I know he's an incredible player. I know everyone across the board says he's number one. But one thing I do point out is, is that if you just watch the NCAA tournament, right, if you didn't watch regular season college basketball, and I had no idea what the news was in college basketball, I would have thought Jalen Suggs was the clear number one overall pick rather than Cade Cunningham because Cade didn't really differentiate himself on that side stage does it matter if you're the number one overall pick number one overall prospect do you need to kind of make more of a splash when all the lights are on no i don't think so because we're still talking about 17 18 19 year old kids uh we're looking for traits right you're looking at what these guys can become in the nba not what finished products they are now we've been fooled before by guys that have had big postseasons and big tournament runs and then just do nothing in the nba so a guy not playing his best basketball in the tournament doesn't completely concern me. Hey, I, I remember that. Johnny Flynn in that six-overtime yeah. game with Syracuse. Everyone's like, he's going to be incredible. The Timberwolves did draft three point guards in that round, though. So, I mean, not a great situation either way. But the Pistons have the number one pick. They have floated out there that they're open to trades. Would a trade be possible for off the number one pick, or is this just seeing who offers what? I mean, I think anything's possible, especially if a team wants to offer like a superstar type of player for that number one pick. But I don't envision that happening. I think the Pistons are in a long rebuild here. They know that Cunningham, uh, they would have him under contract for the foreseeable future. I think they're just floating this out there to see if they can get a King's ransom for him. Uh, but it doesn't appear that's going to be, be the case. And I do expect Cade to be the pick at number one. Yeah, I mean, you know, if there are offers coming in, I'd imagine the Thunder could be one. They had a chance at coming away with two top five picks if Houston fell to number five. And instead, Oklahoma City's at six, so maybe they trade that in future assets. Or the Magic as well, they fell out of the top three uh, and might want to get back into that mix. But outside of Detroit, obviously coming away with the top pick, the biggest win of the night. Who's another winner? Yeah, I like the Golden State Warriors, who got the seventh pick in exchange for uh, D'Angelo Russell. Uh, we kind of knew that the Warriors were going to get this pick unless it ended up inside the top three. But to have the seventh pick on top of the 14th pick gives Golden State a lot of flexibility. Uh, they have a lot of assets now they can use to go get another big-time player. If they stay at seven, the guy that I really like is Davion Mitchell from Baylor. Uh, he's one of these kind of combo guards that can play off the ball. He can play on the ball. He shot nearly 45% from three last year. Uh, he's an excellent on-ball defender. You put him with Stephen Clay, that's probably the best backcourt in the NBA. I think that makes a lot of sense, and I think the Warriors absolutely won the lottery. Absolutely. And Clay coming back healthy next year, that's going to be quite the team back in business. I mean, we saw the lottery unfold last night. We saw the fact that they did the the new all the top three teams mm -hmm. or the three worst records have a 14% chance at getting the number one pick. Is this working? Do you think that this is dissuading teams from tanking or, or affecting it at all? I'm not sure if teams are not tanking as much now because of the way the lottery is structured. I just think it makes even more sense to try to get in the, you know, the top three or top four. Um, I don't know. I think tanking is always going to happen in the NBA because stars are so important and getting the number one and number two pick means so much. So I think the NBA would like to say there's no tanking in the, their sport and that the lottery helps that, but I'm not sure that's the case. I think the only way to really avoid tanking is if you implement like relegation like they have in Premier League soccer or that something like fun. that. If you're this bad, you don't get to play with the big boys. You go down to the G League and we're going to bring up this team here. That's the only way people are going to fear going below that red line. 
if it affects the wallet, if it affects the fan base. Otherwise, they're like, mm, it's just uh, a really great player coming up the draft. Let's slide on down. Yeah, that'll never happen. But wouldn't that be a fun concept for the NBA? I think that would be incredible. Right? Go the opposite direction that the Super League went in soccer. Just go yes. the Super yes. NBA. We're going to take your rules and we're going to throw them in there. We'll see. It'll never happen, but a girl can dream, right? Uh, Marcus Mosher, I'm Madeline Burke. Continue to check in on thegameday.com for all the latest.